The 533 Tiny Trainer is one of the most fun quads you can fly, period. It's a little three inch racing drone. It's styled after the DRL Racer 4, so it kind of looks cool. It's super durable. It flies really well. And I don't know, there's just something about it. It is really, really fun to fly. But how could we make it better? Well, FPV Crate thinks they have made it better because they've got a version of the Tiny Trainer now that is solder free. I don't think it's 100% solder free. I think you still have to solder on the receiver. And they've got HD zero. That's right. They've got an analog version and an HD zero version. So you can get that high definition digital goodness. And you know which version we're building in this video, don't you? That's right. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The tiny trainer that I'm building in this video was sent to me by FPV Crate. I did not purchase it with my own money. There are links down in the video description if you want to pick it up and they are affiliate links, which means I receive a small commission if you make any purchase at FPV Crate after you click that link. Here's what comes in the kit. We've got props, great. We've got the frame, cool. We've got the HD zero video transmitter, nice. We've got the HD zero camera and the antenna, the motors and the flight controller and some stickers. And I want to start this video by looking at the flight controller and the motors because that's what makes this kit unique. Well, different than the previous ones anyway. So here we can see that they have installed plugs for each of the four motors. Uh, this flight controller always had direct solder pads and there was the possibility of adding plugs, but it didn't come with the plugs pre-installed. In addition to that, they have pre-soldered a plug for presumably the camera. And you can see here that they have pre-soldered a plug for the camera and the video transmitter. And those are for analog camera and analog video transmitter. Since we're using HD zero, this isn't going to be quite as solder free as it might be. Now this flight controller has always had a receiver plug and it comes with this wire which will plug into the flight controller, but of course we are gonna have to solder that to our receiver as well. And the 533 motors come with the plugs pre-installed, so we're at least not gonna have to solder them up. These are gonna be used to mount our flight controller. We're gonna put them up through these four holes in the main plate. Once the four screws are placed, we will install one of the nylon nuts on each of them to hold them in place. And you're gonna leave these nuts loose so the screws have just a little bit of flop in them. Uh, and that's gonna help us get our flight controller installed. We can tighten them down later. Once the screws and nuts are placed, we're gonna go ahead and slide the flight controller down on top of them. Um, the back of the frame is here and the front is here. And the pre-soldered power wire is gonna go out the back. Watch out for this situation where one of the soft mounting gummies actually pushes up out of the flight controller. We're gonna to need to take this off and reinstall that gummy and do it again. Actually, several of them did that. We're gonna to need to reinstall those. We can't let that happen. I've just noticed a really nice improvement that they've made to this build. I don't know when this change was made, but the flight controller now has the USB port facing down coming out the bottom of the bottom plate. On the previous version that I've got, you have to take off this plastic cover in order to get at the USB, which is a real pain. Next, we're going to take our motors and these M2 by four screws, which are the motor mounting screws. And we're going to mount the motors at the end of the arms. Now that we've got four motors installed, we're going to go ahead and plug those motors in. And certainly one of the questions that I wondered when they told me they'd done this was how good are these connectors going to be? Because you hear about people direct soldering the motors on their, like their Emacs Tiny Hawk and they're tiny whoops because the plugs go a little flaky. I have to wonder whether people are gonna end up in that same situation here with this tiny trainer, but you haven't lost anything. If you end up needing to direct solder them, I guess you have to take it back apart again and solder it up. Hmm. Quick note for you as you're plugging your motors in, um, I would suggest that you reinforce the backside of the plug as you're pushing it in so you're squeezing together with your fingers. Um, I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna break something, but as I was plugging in, I pushed a little too hard and I kind of wiggled one of the motor plugs and thought, hmm, if I do that a few more times, it'll just break off. So yeah, just squeeze them together. 
Well, so far, we haven't had to pull out our soldering iron at all, and not having to solder those 12 motor joints certainly was nice, but I'm afraid we're going to need to get out our soldering iron. If you are new to soldering, because this is one of your first builds, I've got a soldering tutorial. It's like 45 minutes long, and everybody in FPV probably should watch it, because most people in FPV aren't as good at soldering as they could be, including me, to be honest. But I've got a link to that tutorial down in the video description if you want to check it out if you're not quite confident in your soldering. What we're actually going to do is some desoldering. We're going to remove these pre-soldered camera and video transmitter wires because, like I said, I am going to be using HD0, so I'm not going to be using an analog camera or video transmitter. So we don't need those. If you're doing an analog build, I, I, you're not following along with this tutorial. I think. Here's the next piece of soldering you might or might not need to do. It depends on what type of receiver you're using. If you're using a FreeSky receiver or any other receiver that outputs the SBUS protocol, then you do not need to change this solder joint. Um, they have shipped this solder bridge pre-installed with a zero ohm resistor that you can see if you can just read that text there is selecting for SBUS. And that controls a parameter of this plug that needs to be set differently for SBUS receivers than for any other kind of receiver. Damn it, I've just noticed something. See this plug here? See this standoff hole? Oops. Plug can't go there. We're going to have to solder on our receiver too. That's a bummer. In order to connect the HD0 video transmitter to the Beta FPV flight controller, we are going to use this plug which is designed for digital video transmitters. And it's got all of the pins that we need here in the plug. The HD0 video transmitter has, it's probably a little hard for you to read the silk screen, but take my word for it, ground, VBAT, RX, and TX. And those are gonna go to BAT plus, ground, TX, and RX. And then we're gonna just ignore the S bus and ground. That would only be used with a DJI video transmitter that output from the DJI controller. So here's the plug here and here's the flight controller. We'll go ahead and plug that in and it should be very simple. We've got, yep, red, black, yellow, and white. And we'll just remove these extra black and yellow wires. We're not gonna use those. And I always double check TX and RX. TX on the flight controller goes to RX on the accessory and vice versa. I just make sure that I've got them in the right order. So it goes background TX. So yellow is TX on the flight controller, which is gonna to go to RX on the video transmitter. Well, it looks like we're gonna to have to do some soldering after all. I guess this wasn't as much of a no solder build as I had hoped. And I'm going to pull out the best third hand tool in the world this little guy. These things are magnetic. They go wherever you need them to go. They stay where you put them. They squeeze and clamp. I think I'm only going to need two for this job, so I'm just going to push these guys out of the way. I've got a video about this. I'll put a link down in the video description where you can see a... I'd like to say it's a full review, but really I just rave about it for like eight minutes. For receiver, I'm going to be using the Happy Model Express LRS EP2 receiver. And if you're not up to date on Express LRS, this is why it is perfect for a tiny little build like this, because that is a whole damn receiver, including the antenna. And the pinout for this receiver is the same as a Crossfire receiver, ground, 5 volt, TX, RX. And make note that you are looking at this from the side of the receiver that doesn't have the antenna on it. And I always just look for this big thick pad here and I know that that's where ground is and then I work my way over ground 5 volt TXRX. And it is really a shame that we can't use this plug because we're going to lose a whole UART. They put UART 3 in this plug and then we're going to have to use UART 1 over here and if we needed that extra UART for something we would just be out of luck. Um, maybe if they were smart they had put solder pads under this plug. If we lift the plug up, we'll find them. You can always theoretically solder to the back side of these pins if you really wanted to, but I don't think it's worth it. We're going to solder to TX1, RX1, 5 volt, and ground here. 
And again, TX on the on the receiver is going to go to RX on the flight controller and vice versa. Now, if you are using any other kind of receiver like Ghost, Tracer, or Crossfire, then the soldering and the wiring is going to be the same. You're going to solder to T1 or R1 as needs be. But if you're using a FreeSky receiver, life gets complicated because you need an inverted RX pad, and that is normally inside the plug, but you can't use the plug. So what are you going to do? And the answer is that you have to remove the little zero ohm resistor that is on this S-Bus pad and solder directly to this tiny pad, which is intended for a solder bridge, not for a wire to solder to it. And I have pointed out to FPV Crate that this is hardly consistent with a quote unquote, easy to build solder free beginner build, asking you to solder to this tiny pad with the most common type of receiver used by beginners, which is FreeSky but that is the solution that is available right now, and that's it. So the receiver is gonna go in the back, and I think we're gonna run the wires this way, and the gyro chip is right here, so we don't have to worry about the wires touching the gyro. That's gonna be okay. That's pretty bad, that's, that's not, I don't consider that to be good soldering. That's a difficult, tiny little joints, so I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Let's get on with our lives, though. Next, we're gonna take this bag of spacers, which comes with the kit, and we're gonna use it to mount the HD0 video transmitter on top of the stack. We're just gonna set them down. One, two, three, four. I think we're gonna need two, both of them. Maybe not, it comes with eight. Let's see what happens if I put this down here. It looks like there's room. It doesn't look like it's touching anywhere, especially in the rear where the XT, where the XT30 plug is. It looks like there's space everywhere with only one set of spacers, so that's what we're gonna go with. Now that we're sure about that, we can go ahead and plug this guy up. And I'm gonna rotate this with the UFL in the rear and the MIPI connector for the camera in the front. Since the camera goes in the front, the antenna's gonna go out the back. Oh dang. Mm. I gotta route this cable over the top. It doesn't have enough room to go down through. But it is just long enough, I think, that I can do what I said I was gonna do. There we go, yes. And we can take a couple more of these little nylon nuts and put them on top to hold the stack together. Now if you didn't tighten these nuts down previously, uh, what you can just do is apply a little bit of pressure on the board to keep the nut from rotating, or even if it does rotate, it may still tighten down. I'm not sure how tight you can, there we go, yeah. And then that'll bring the whole thing cinched up both the top and the bottom nut. So as I'm tightening these nuts down, I can't help but notice that these silicon gummies are compressible, and if I tighten the nut down enough, it squishes the whole thing together to the point where maybe the HD0 can touch the flight controller after all. Um, I thought about adding another standoff and adding some height to the stack, but if we look at the canopy, we can see that there is not enough room to make this stack any taller at all. So just be careful that you don't squish them down so close that they touch. Next, we're gonna take these screws and these standoffs and we are gonna install them. And we're not just gonna stick the screws up through the bottom plate and install the standups like usual because if you take a look at my other one, this is the battery holder and it also uses these screws. Once you've got the four screws installed, then you're gonna lay the quad upside down and identify the front. And definitely don't do this backwards and have to do it another time like I totally didn't just do. We're gonna identify the front of the battery holder and then it's gonna go into the two standoff holes on the one side of the quad. And then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna install those two standoffs. All right, when that's done, we're going to flip it back over. We're going to fold this around so these screws come back around and they're going to go through the other side. Now at this point you might be thinking, what about these two little flippity bits here? Those sure look like they line up with the stack screw. Are you telling me that now I have to pull my stack screw back out again to do this part? Yeah. So let's see if I can keep this all together while I remove the screw and put it through there and back in here and keep it all lined up. There we go. 
Next, we're going to take this 3D printed piece and we're going to slide it down over the rear standoffs. And the receiver is going to mount on here, just like so. And I've got some Scotch Extreme mounting tape uh, that I like to use. We're just going to stick it on here and we're going to see how well it sticks to this TPU plastic. Yeah, it's not going to stick very well at all. Well, that sucks. It doesn't seem like any tape is really going to hold real well, so I'm just going to get some good old electrical tape. You know I love it. The thing about electrical tape is it sticks to itself, if nothing else. Probably uses zip tie, but I kind of like the fact that that's got some stickiness to it. Next, we're going to take this little 3D printed part and our antenna, and we're going to identify this little hole right here. And the antenna wire is going to go through this opening and then through the hole out the bottom side. It was uh, fairly difficult to get that to go through. I had to get in there with my little forceps and kind of help it along. I didn't want to mess up the plug or the wire. Once that goes through, you're going to keep pulling through and then this is going to, it's going to, the whole antenna is going to kind of pop through here and it'll stretch around it. If you want to, you can use a hairdryer or a hot air gun to soften this TPU up a little bit, or you can even put it in some boiling water for a short period of time. Don't, not for too long or you'll just freaking melt it. When you're done, this is what you will have. Uh, we should rotate that a little bit. And you're gonna wanna try to get it to go in so the cable goes down out that hole. You don't want the cable to be, there we go. You don't want the cable to be uh, pressed in here or bent around. It wants to come straight out that hole. And when you're done, whoo, that is going to be the result. Don't tug on the cable. Don't tug on this wire coming out of the antenna to help you do it though. You'll, you'll wreck it. It's going to go through this hole in this 3D printed piece and then it's going to press down onto the rear standoffs. And then we're going to twist this around and pop it down on this UFL connector here on the HD0. Next, we're going to take this 3D printed piece, which is the camera holder, and it's been 3D printed with a support in here, which has not been removed. I don't know if yours will be removed, but just get in there and yank it out, just like that. And that'll leave you, well, oh, still some cleanup to do, sadly. Once the support material is removed, here's what you're going to be left with and we can go ahead and mount the camera in there. The camera we're using is the Runcam Nano HD0 camera. It is a 14 millimeter wide camera and those are gonna be the only ones that work with the Tiny Trainer. Before we mount the camera, we're gonna take this HD0 MIPI cable, which is basically the cable that connects the camera to the video transmitter. And we're just gonna line it up carefully here and press it on. Now for the camera mount, this little bit here that hangs off is the bottom and the curved bit here is the top. And for the camera, the MIPI connector is on bottom and the cable goes out the top. So with them in this alignment, we're gonna pass this cable through and the camera is gonna slide in from the front. And you just wanna make sure the camera is right side up or you'll be you have to take it out and do it again. Then we're going to take these little uh, two millimeter or whatever screws. We're going to line up the screw hole and the camera's mount with this hole in the in the camera holder. And we're going to just use put that screw in and hold the camera in place. Ooh, got it in the first try. And next, we're going to push this camera holder down over the front standoffs. And we're going to take the MIPI cable and we need to connect it to this MIPI plug here. I'm just going to line that up and click it into place. The next thing I got to do is the complete setup. I got to do Express LRS setup, 
Betaflight setup and HD0 setup. That is going to be in the next video, and when it's out, I'll put a card on screen and a link down in the video description. In the meantime, if you're thinking about switching from analog to HD0 or wondering how HD0 stacks up against DJI, I made a video recently, and the title was HD0 is almost ready to replace analog. And if you want to see that, that's available now, and I'll put a card on screen and a link down below for that. See you there.